Hi everyone, this is Dr. Gokte. I am back, going to teach you guys about uh, pediatric dentistry. It's a fun and challenging topic. Um, it's a, like a roller coaster, how we have fun on a roller coaster, but then it's something where we are scared and uh, can't predict everything. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a few tips uh, clinical tips which will help you determine what kind of filling to do in what kind of situation. So um, first I'm going to tell you there, there are mainly three fill types of fillings I do. I do amalgam, composites, and glass enamors. Uh, and uh, a lot of times in the posterior teeth I go ahead and do amalgam fillings in a deciduous teeth because they are going to shed off. And uh, most of the time, parents and patients are comfortable doing an amalgam filling. But we definitely have to get a consent from the uh, parent as well as the patient that they're OK with a black color uh, filling in their mouth, uh, in the back. Um, they are uh, Amalgams are a bit easier. Uh, to manure as well as they are not that technique sensitive uh, and even some little moisture is okay with amalgams. So it's easier to do them. If there is a lot of bleeding, a lot of uh, moisture and the patient is getting uncooperative, right away we every time when we have a pedo patient, we keep a glass enamel filling material with us. So moment we feel that this is gonna get to a gray zone, uh, we just switch to the glass enamel. It's quick and easy. You, um, I will go over the glass enamel filling with you guys too. And you just do a glass enamel fillings. They are very durable, very good and uh, 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 patients love it because they are uh, almost like composites. So a um, uh, few times I also do composites in the posterior and it depends upon patient's cooperation. So if the patient is really cooperative, they want a white filling in the back, even if it's a deciduous teeth, yeah, we can definitely go ahead and uh, do a composite filling. So let's go over amalgam, composite, and glass animal fillings. And uh, then I'll go ahead and discuss about sp space maintainers and also about STF. So let's begin with amalgam. Amalgam, class two amalgam restorations in primary teeth. The best thing about amalgam restorations in primary teeth is they are almost similar to the uh, permanent teeth um, amalgams. Not much of a difference, except, you know, um, the glass, uh, the, um, the teeth are smaller, so we need to use smaller instruments. Um, and um, it's also that um, uh, they, uh, the, the filling, the primary teeth have less occlusal anatomy than the permanent teeth. So you need to know note that for carving. Also primary preps are smaller. The dimensions are smaller. The pulpal depth in case of uh, permanent teeth, we have to go minimum 1.5 millimeter. In case of primary preps, we have to go less than 1.5 millimeter. Remember the pulp is pretty close. So we have to be careful uh, in uh, uh, deciduous teeth when we are uh, going to drill for the uh, prep for amalgam uh, filling. So we use smaller instruments, smaller condenser, smaller diameter condenser, ball and football burnishers, similar. Everything is almost same. Uh, you know, it's all, everything gets to the scale smaller in size. You use the carver, the cloid carver, Holland back, same. Everything is same. Uh, now for the matrix bands, now you can use a Tofelmeyer. You can use the same wedges. It all depends upon the patient. This, when the patient is very cooperative, I go ahead and do 
everything similar to how we do in Permanente. You don't have to change anything. Um, but then if you want to be quick and fast, these de novo matrix bands, they are pretty good. Um, you know, you just snap them on the top of the tooth and they work great. So you can give that a try. Uh, sometimes what I do is if uh, these are not working for me, I would take a Toffelmeyer band and I'll just cut it. And then I'll just place that in that space. So you don't need the, ba the band and the, you know, the instrument and all that stuff. It's just the, uh, the, the band and the wedge. And you just place that and put your filling and it works. So, you know, you just have to try different things which work for you. And uh, these are certain thing, tips which will help you. So use smaller condenser, uh, small enough that will fit into the smaller prep. When you are putting the amalgam filling in there, you need to use firm pressure and you wanna make sure you condense well and there is no voids. Condense, now when, if you are doing two fillings adjacent to each other and they, are, they have boxes, then you wanna put amalgam in both of them and then condense both of them together so, so that the boxes for both of them are formed properly. Then for the margins, you use the football or the ball burnisher and you release the amalgam around the periphery with an explorer. So it's not sharp uh, because if, you, if it's sharp and you try to remove your uh, band, then the amalgam can break. So make sure you release the amalgam around the periphery with your explorer. Uh, remove wedges and carefully remove any band you have placed slowly, carefully, and you should be good. Then you contour your filling with the carver and you um, carve with the Holland back um, the proximal box if you want to. Um, and, uh, and then um, you define the central anatomy only. So there, you don't have to go into defining the cent uh, secondary grooves, et cetera. Um, and so just basic anatomy uh, and do not place deep anatomies. Uh, make sure you always check occlusion and a lot of times we do like slot preps, which are shown in this picture. Um, they're quick and easy and uh, they stay pretty well. So um, I think that is the part for uh, the amalgam. And um, now I'm gonna talk about composites and glass enamors. So um, let me talk about glass enamors right now first before I switch to composites. So glass enamors, uh, we use Equia. Uh, previously, we were using Fuji 9. Um, we like Equia because um, it, I think it's uh, more stronger. And also uh, we put a layer on top, uh, which kind of uh, prevents it uh, that uh, it doesn't erode as soon. Um, and uh, with glass animal, it's pretty simple. Uh, if it's a class one, uh, you just uh, pour the, um, uh, uh, there is an um, etch kind of a thing, like a, a conditioner. So you use the conditioner on the tooth, rinse it off, and then you um, put the, um, um, the glass animal in the prep. Uh, so the, uh, the assistant or you are going to basically snap the capsule, put the capsule and mix it um, in that amalgamator. Uh, and then uh, you're going to place it on that gun and squeeze it in. Uh, and I have YouTubes, which are um, all on the links for um, the amalgams, for composites, as well as for the... Um, uh, glass animals, please, please watch them. They are very, very important. Uh, they're gonna help you understand what I'm talking. And also 
the quiz questions are going to be from them too. So they're gonna help you answer the quizzes and understand your material better. So please um, go to the links. Uh, I have attached uh, a lot of them, which I felt were very useful. Um, so please uh, watch them. Uh, so now once you have placed the, uh, uh, the Equia or the Fuji 9 in there, uh, what I do is I take a micro brush and dip it in water. And you don't want it soaking in the water, but just little water on it. And then you kind of shape your filling, like you kind of make the anatomy of the tooth with that brush and remove the excess and stuff. Um, and then sometimes I even tell the patient to bite on the filling because this is not composite. Uh, 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 glass enamors, you can have moisture around them. Actually, when you are uh, going to put a glass enema, they say that the prep does should not be dry. There should be some water for moisture in there uh, to, for a glass enema filling. So you can make them bite. And a few times when you make them bite, the anatomy is kind of forms perfectly in there. And then with the same micro brush with the water, I kind of tap on it. And then the material has started to harden. So it just kind of condenses in the spots properly. And then it's all ready. Then you make the, you check the occlusion. Now this is important. At this time, you check the occlusion when you're doing Equia or Fuji 9 and remove the excess. Let the material set. So wait for, two to three minutes and then let the material set and then you just use a football shaped burr and remove the excess from the occlusal surface. Once you've removed the excess and the filling looks good, the patient bites down, he's comfortable, everything is good. Then at that time you place the top layer, a top coat, which Equia provides you. So, and then you light cure that top coat for 20 seconds and that's it. You are done with glass enamel, with the Equia. With Fuji 9, they do not give you any top coat. So once you have placed the filling and the occlusion is good, you're ready to go. So that's about it. Now, in case you're gonna do composite, you have to be more careful because there shouldn't be any bleeding there shouldn't be any too much saliva and it shouldn't be too subgingival. But in case of glass enamor, it's great. It's great for, a, for patients who are not behaving that well or who are like in a rush that we should need to finish and let them go. Uh, the, um, glass enamor works great for them. Uh, if it's a subgingival prep, there is some bleeding or anything, it works great. The best about, thing about glass enamor is they bind very well with dentine. So wherever you see that there is not enamel and there is dentine, just switch to glass enamor and it works great. It stays there. I've been doing it for a long time and I've been very happy with them. So, um, Try the glass enamors, you'll be happy too.